everybody, this is Brandon down here at Snake River Fly. Coming at you again here with another tutorial. This one here is on the Chaos Streamer. Sweet little sculpin minnow, kind of just a good all-arounder. You can tie it in a bunch of different colors, got great profile, push some water in. Uh, you know, fish just flat out eat it. And especially this time of year, browns are starting to move around, uh, get more aggressive. And so, uh, as they say, it is streamer season. So, what I got in the vise here, I got a 210 thread, uh, something that's a little beefier. This is a number four Matsu B1, uh, very similar to like your B10S or any of your wide gap straight eye streamer hooks. Um, got my thread already attached here. I'm gonna bring it back kind of to the clouser point as we call it here on the on the shank, more or less two eye widths back. And then some of our large pseudo eyes in brass. And we're just gonna go ahead and figure eight those on here. Get them set. We're gonna make sure that uh, we're not gonna move these um, they are going to ride, make it so this hook rides hook point up. I mean, if you've ever fished in our neck of the woods, especially on our sections of the snake, there's a lot of basalt rock down there and uh, you can donate some flies in a hurry. Um, so having something that rides hook point up allows you to not lose as nearly as many flies um, and uh, kind of saves your wallet and uh, keeps your fishing longer. So we got those attached in there. We're going to put our imaginary super glue here, lock those in place kind of where, we're, where we want them. And we're just going to lay a thread base down here. So we're going to build a dubbing belly, stacking some of our solar flare. And this is in the UV blue color, what we use in that uh, that perch, that balanced perch. It kind of turns yellowish. Uh, really cool. Gives it that cool translucent minnow belly. And so this stuff is pretty long, full length. So we're just going to come through, stack it a few times so it all gets kind of lined up. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it right down the middle with my scissors, 50-50. And then just to kind of clean up those really flat edges, we'll stack it one more time. Okay, so now that we got it stacked, we're gonna take a small pinch of this stuff out, nothing too crazy. And we're gonna lay this off the back, tie it in at the 50-50 point. And then we're gonna wrap up about roughly you know, a quarter of the way up the shank, fold this back. Tie it down, move our way up to the midpoint on the shank. And we're just gonna rinse and repeat that three times. We'll stack that one in the middle. Same thing, wrap our way up a little ways, pull that stuff back. Kind of bullet tie that off. And you can see that we're building this really cool taper here that's gonna go into this rabbit strip we're gonna add to it, giving you a really nice belly. So last stack here. We're gonna pop that right between the eyes. Right behind the eyes, I should say. Lay that down. A couple loose wraps there. And there you go. Really, really nice minnow shape here. Kind of that concave taper in. So now we're gonna invert that hook just by using our handy Danny Red Zeddy here. Open up now, new to our website, not new to the world. We've got Magnum Rabbit Strips now, okay? So this is the Olive Variant, one of my favorite colors for around here. Tie this like the Snoogle out of it, a um, bunch of other bugs. Um, but we're gonna take a pretty generous strip of this off the hide, or the, the package here. We're gonna measure this out. We want, you know, the tip of our rabbit to kind of end here with our dubbing as well. So we'll measure that out. Puncture the hide through, pop that out, slide it through, and then we'll put that hook back in the vise, and we're going to pull that tied up against it, pull all these hairs back, pinch it like so, a couple loose wraps, and then we're going to pinch that tight, and then with this tag, I'm going to wiggle this side to side, and that's going to kind of distribute that hair a little bit better on both sides. Few more securing wraps on top, a few more in the front, and we'll trim that out. Okay, so I'm just gonna come through and just kind of clean this up a little bit, secure that rabbit down a little more, check both sides. And honestly, you could probably fish it just like that and it would be just fine, but that's not what we're doing here today. We're, we're creating chaos with this new dubbing here that I'm about to show you guys. So this is a new leg, it's a fire camo. Similar to like Arcasian Craw, but it's got a lot more modeling to it. Some more, uh, you know, oranges and some spotting. 
really cool, just all around fishy color. Okay, so I'm gonna take two strands of that. I'm gonna fold that over our thread. We're gonna tie that into where we get two of these legs going down each side. A, breaks the pattern up, adds kind of a lateral line and uh, makes it look a little more diverse than it is. Okay, so we got these two here. We're gonna pull these back and we're gonna trim them just short of the tail. We want them to stay a little long, just that way you still get the movement and they show up. Okay, so now, final step here. The newest material that we're coming out with is our Chaos Dub. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of junk going on here. This is a blend of pretty much all of our favorites with a few new things. Creates amazing bodies, awesome bulk. You know, it's, it's really puffy. So you can create that, you know, imaginary bulk without the weight, but spin it up in a loop, make some incredible looking heads that you can trim um, up and, and get some really realistic looking bugs here. So we're gonna create a dubbing loop here right behind the eyes, decently long. Close that up. And then we're gonna bring our thread up to the eye, let it hang, gonna grab our dubbing tool here. And we're gonna take this chaos dub and we're just gonna stack it just like we would any dubbing. And you can see there is really no rhyme or reason to it. It is just everywhere. So we'll open up our loop, stack that in there like so. And we wanna keep this fairly dense. This is a material that you could utilize some wax or make sure that you're using a wax thread. It will help because it kind of can get a little slippery. We'll get that all part out there. That's sweet loop and then we'll go ahead and spin it up. Don't spin your legs up. And then we're just gonna come through about halfway through here. And we're not gonna go too crazy, but we're just gonna lightly pick some of these fibers out. We don't wanna lose too many right out of the gate, but just so we don't trap them. Tighten it down. One thing to always note too with your, with your dubbing loops is as soon as you start seeing that thread start sucking up, that means that you're pretty much maxing out your tensile strength on that. So if you go too much further, you're gonna bust it and you're gonna have to restart. You'll be pissed and they'll be dubbing everywhere. So we get that brushed out super nice like so. And then we're just gonna kind of pinch and roll that fiber to one side. You see it really, it makes it really easy, wants to stick. And then we'll just go ahead and start wrapping that, touching wraps up. Get that one turn behind the eyes and we're gonna come up and over. Pull that stuff back, up and over. And we're gonna just finish it up. Should get, you know, if you got your spacing correct, you should get at least three wraps up there in front. So a few wraps over the top, a few wraps there. We'll trim out our loop. Pull the, the chaos back. And then just some cleanup wraps here. A, making things look sweet. And locking that in. And we'll come in with our whip finish tool. If Larry was tying this bug, we'd have 752. But since I'm doing it, we're doing 650 today. And just for good measure, we're just going to double, double down on that. Okay. So now get the sharpest scissors on the planet to cut your thread. And then we're just gonna come through and we're just gonna really rip on this stuff with this brass brush, gun cleaning brush, something more than Velcro, just so you can really pick it all out. Best move, brush it all forward, and then you can brush it all back. You can see how this stuff just kind of has no rhyme or reason and it just all kind of wants to taper back different lengths, super, super cool how it transitions that way. And so once we kind of get it where we want it, we'll come through with our scissors and just give it a, just a light trim, just to give it some shape. So we got to catch fishermen too, right?
sweet little trim there. Now you got the perfect shape on that head. Bunch of crazy dynamic stuff going on here. A lot of layers in this dubbing, which is really cool, especially when you spin it. You can see how it all blends and layers back down into the fly. and gives you that really cool kind of modeled front end on that. But this stuff, like I said, is going to hold its shape really, really well. It's got a lot of bounce, a lot of volume in it, air. So you come up in that perfect minnow shape, into that rabbit strip, tapers down really, really nice. Gives you the perfect kind of minnow profile. So that is the Chaos Minnow. I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't subscribed already to the YouTube channel, uh, please do. We would appreciate it a ton. And you can find this on the website and other places. <laughs> is, Give me that. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, other videos on the website and such. Um, so thanks you guys a ton and uh, happy fishing.